What is good, everybody? I am, once again, your humble host of this wonderful evening here in my office. Kind of office, there's nothing back here. It's kind of <laughs> my wall, but office. It's in, it's in, it's in production. Um, <laughs> you know, I am here on another very special episode of Teasy's Table. I am thankful for all you guys who support the show, youtube.com backslash story city podcast, Teasy's Table, which is another podcast on this wonderful show. We sit here and talk. I sit here and talk to some of my wonderful friends and music, wrestling, life, sports. You don't know who I'm gonna have on here. I know everybody. I know a little bit of everybody and do a little bit of everything. So each and every week you guys see me on this podcast, I'm always bringing in some great, youthful people that I connect with in all walks of life. Right now, I would like to have on who has been one of my favorite entertainers, not just wrestlers, entertainers, and <laughs> in the game for a very, very, very long time. She's done her thing. She's very knowledgeable, smart, beautiful woman. She's she's always been on top of her game, whatever that she does. She's entrepreneurship she's her mind is is way above everybody else's and how she's <laughs> always been on top of her game i've been watching and a lot of times you watch certain people and you see how they move and how they promote things whether it's business how they carry their brand and they're always a step ahead of everybody else which a lot of people need to take notes from this woman i'm managing their brand yeah <laughs> he is also one of the dopest wrestlers in the ring one of the one of the sweetest people i've met in this game that has always had my back so every time i see her it's always been love I'd like to introduce my friend, Miss Taya Valkyrie. How are you doing? Hello, I'm good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you know, first time we met was in 2019, 18. Uh, we was on a travel tour, PCW. Me and Swerve mm-hmm. did a podcast out there for PCW. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the first time that we linked up. And um, that's the first time he was on. And the second time he came on the podcast, uh, we was in Orlando. Uh, yep. you, John, Leo Rush came through, shout out to him, and we all came yep. and uh, did the podcast together here. Now, it's just me and you here, and I thank you first for coming on and giving me your wonderful time, you know? It, no worries, I'm woman. excited. Very I'm busy. excited, I'm excited. <laughs> all right, so I'd like to ask, I'd like to break the ice with these questions. Everybody likes to go into different things and, you know, and for, you know go uh, deeper into questions. First of all, I gotta ask this question. How are you doing? How's life? Are you okay? Are you good? Uh, I'm good. It's been a little chaotic lately, but uh, I also thrive in chaos. So I am taking it in stride. I am putting, you know, the negativity and these things that are, have happened to the side, to the back, because they don't belong in my life anymore. And I'm just moving forward. Amen. Amen. So let's, uh, you know, I'm doing good too. I'm doing the same. I'm pushing me. Good, good, good. Day. Gotta push through. You got to push through, <laughs> staying motivated, staying hungry, yes. you know, and uh, worried about, um, you know, other different chapters and things that we have to accomplish because we are exactly we are very different vessels of human beings that has many different talents and explorations and things that we have to do. And um, I'm definitely and passions and everything. And passions, so. Absolutely. That shouldn't, you know, be vexed in any way. Let me mm-hmm. ask you this question. First of all, you're on the island and this island is not. An island that is, you know, oh, I'm like, not like Tom Hanks or Castle or like that. There's food and stuff like that. Okay. So, so <laughs> you know, you're. Um, I'm not you know, talking to a volleyball yet. Okay. No, okay. no, you're not. No, you're not talking to a tree and the, the tree like communicates <laughs> with sap falling off the tree. No, you're good. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you could take one album with you, but this album has to be of a genre that you're not necessarily either fond of or listen too much. So who are you taking? <sighs> to give it a shot basically oh gosh here's the thing i actually am a person that doesn't have a specific genre of music that is like the only thing i listen to i kind of listen to a lot of everything old stuff new stuff pop r&b hip-hop everything so i don't really know if there's particularly something that, like off the top of my head that i might have to like try but maybe it would be like a country album because I'm not like super, super into that. I don't know. But then I'm Canadian and I like Shania Twain. I don't know. So, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. It would be, there's just so many, I don't just like one thing. I like a lot of things. So I don't know. Yeah, it's probably some kind of country album. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny because everybody I ask that, they all, it always goes, it always revolves to country every really <laughs> it's like the fourth person that said that because it's like i don't think that's everybody's like first choice unless yeah. you're like unless you're in really deep into that 
I think everybody yeah. won't say, oh, you know, I might try this George Strait album or, or you know, or Garth Brooks should album I? that I always yeah. heard about. You know, should I have Twain or something like that? And you're like, you know, you, you normally people normally go to country because that's not usually everybody's first choice. That's funny. Yeah. People say that. Um, okay. Batman or Superman? Batman. Mm. Okay. I've and always, then, I'm, yeah, I'm a Catwoman person, so... I okay. just like that dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> got you. Got you. Um, Thanos or Incredible Hulk? Um, I'm going to go with Thanos because mm. he's got lots of sparkly jewels. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And everyone likes, knows I love a little bling. So. <laughs> got you. So, okay. Now, Here's another unique question. He will not be mad at you either way. He can't get mad at you because this is a choice that is very, very once in a lifetime choice. Oh, geez. Okay. Your wonderful, your wonderful, your wonderful husband has a, a movie that he's, he's acting in. He's okay. in Hollywood. He's acting yeah. in his, his favorite movie. He's, he's with all the action heroes. He's with doing, this is his dream picture. He's, yeah. in, he's, he's, he's acting, he's, he's doing Once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime film. And yeah. you didn't, you said you wasn't going to miss a day. You said you wasn't going to miss a day. You gave your word to him. I'm going to be here through everything, through makeup, everything. Okay. Down the street, there's two, there's two, um, there's two shows going on, right? You have, there's Michael Jackson, there's Prince, right across the street from each other. And then there's, then there's your husband's uh, get together for his Hollywood show. What are you doing? Well, is, is it John just on set filming or is it like a party for the event? Like, is it the premiere? Premiere. Okay. Hmm. Michael Jackson and Prince are coming one time. One time only to the way you're I at. would probably tell John, listen. <laughs> <laughs> this is Michael freaking Jackson and Prince. How about we do the red carpet? Look all hot in our outfits, and then we both ditch this party and go to these concerts. <laughs> there you go. You make two, you know, two more make than one appearances. Story. You know, hello, hello, yes, entertainment tonight, hello. Uh, and then you're like, you and you get, <laughs> and, the, and then you're yeah. out of here. You're gone, right? Yeah. Now, you we know, know what, what happens. We would know what would happen in the movie because he would have just been in the movie, and you right. can't tell me that I wouldn't have seen it before or cuts of it. So. Would anybody even really know if he left for like a few hours with me? <laughs> like, look, <man>. Just... <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. This man, Michael Jackson, had grown men crying. Yeah. Grown men standing there. The man wouldn't even perform it. He would just stay, pop off the stage and stand still for 10 minutes. And everybody yeah. start crying. I ain't missing that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. You could be bad. I, mean, I, will, I will admit there has been musicians who have brought me to tears. So. Yeah, it it, it 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 happens, you know. And I I I asked that question, and somebody asked me, "What would I do?" It's like, look, my girl's got to be bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> if she's not going, I'm going. I'm not missing that. <laughs> I'm not missing it. Uh, we can talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, another another thing here. Um, what intangible do you think is required inside all entertainers to be successful? What must we all have? as entertainers to be successful? Stubbornness. <laughs> Great answer. Great. You don't hear that, that often. You don't hear no, that often. You have to be stubborn. And I will say that throughout my career, my life in general, I think, uh, I've been stubborn because I'm so focused on what I want and what I know I am good enough to get or achieve or win or whatever it is or the part and a part in a movie or a tv show or whatever it is but there has to be a level of stubbornness because this is a very hard entertainment as a whole professional sports as a whole are so competitive and you know you have to be that one in a million and you have to be stubborn enough to tell and tell yourself like i am that one in a million mm, okay mm -hmm. if there's one thing about yourself mm -hmm. that I want to say a flaw, because I think we all grow as people. But mm -hmm. one thing about yourself that you're willing to share about that you're working on to this day as a person, what what is it? 
Is it patience? What, 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 what could it be? Um, especially with just how like the last year of my life has gone, I realize that sometimes I'm too much of a, I'm too much of a people pleaser. Like I, mm. I am very, I'm like, yep, yep, totally. And I will like stay late, do whatever, like, just because I'm like, I just want to make sure everybody's happy. And like, I, and then sometimes to my, to my detriment or like, sometimes like, instead of just like allowing myself to really focus on myself, sometimes I'm just like, kind of like, you know, a people pleaser. I don't know how else to say it, right. but right. I sometimes need to learn to be a little bit more selfish and worry about me as a person. Mm. So, if that makes sense. I don't know. Like, no, no, we all go yeah. through that. I think that in our respective fields, relationships are everything. And mm-hmm. I think that sometimes within our fields, you can either do one or too much of the other thing. You can either be, like you said, too stubborn and not really get along and say no to everything and not and be cast as a, as a goal, as not as a, as a hard person to work with. Yeah, hard to deal with. Or hard to deal yeah. with, right? Yeah, right. Or you can do the opposite and everybody loves you, but you're not happy within yourself. And yeah, and you're just, you know, you're, and you're like, it becomes also for me, I've always thought of myself as I'm very sensitive to like people's energy. Like I can walk in a room and I'm like, I know, right. I feel like I know right away if I'm going to like get along with someone or not. And so sometimes when you're in these very competitive environments or, or in different workplaces and because I'm so sensitive and because I like can just feel like I, it like makes me tired. Like I become like, I don't know, like, you know, when you're just like spreading yourself too thin sometimes and like, mm-hmm. just you're giving so much, uh, 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 but then you're like, get home and you're just like, oh my God, I can't even think straight kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how, that's how it becomes because it, it's tough out here, man. And you got to think, man, we're like, I always say, and I can always say on every show, man, we are mercenaries, man. We are mercenaries for how we eat. We have to, we're our own bosses. We're our own managers a lot. Yeah, we like we got to speak up for ourselves. We got to negotiate our own money a lot of the times, unless you have someone f- that you can trust. And, yeah, and also like as a woman, like sometimes when you do right, stand up for your your right. as a, for yourself, you get viewed as being difficult, or you be viewed as, oh, she doesn't want to listen, or she's a bitch, or she's you know like all this kind of stuff. So you have to become like over like you're over. At least for me, it was like I would over. Sometimes I overthink what I'm going to say because I, I. I don't want to offend anybody, you know, and we live in a world where it's like, uh, I, I can speak my truth and speak my, how I feel about something. And then I will instantly get attacked for people, by people who honestly, if I saw them on the street, would I ask their opinion about anything that has to do with me? Absolutely not. So why do I care? But it's just, we live in like this crazy time of like, I do think it is. And that's why I'm trying to be more like, you know, speak my truth and, be strong and powerful as the woman that I know that I am, as opposed to just kind of sitting back and being like, eh, you know. Absolutely. I mean, as has um, you know, let's let's give a shout out to the people that might not be seen. And this is what I like to do. I like to give people the roses that might not, they're not on your Instagram every day, or they might be, or mm-hmm. people in your life. Who are some people in your life that you know you could pick up that phone? And they're not, they might not be the most famous person in the world, but who's that person? Who's those people in your life? Shout out to the, to the, to the strong friends. Who are some of the people that you can call on when you're you're having a downtime that can keep your spirits high? Um, I always call or text my bestest group of girlfriends in Canada, in Calgary, Alberta, Mandy, Brittany, Heather, Sherry. Uh, And we have our like little text group and we would talk and they not are not related to like anything to do with wrestling, with entertainment or anything. So anything like I bitch to them about <laughs> talk or like share or if I'm sad or if I'm stressed out, like because they're so disconnected from it, they just know me for me. They they've known Kira since like I was 17 years old kind of thing. So they just know me before all this stuff. They've known me struggling and succeeding and struggling again and like have, they've just kind of been on this journey with me and I feel like they are the people that ground me the most and are also just like honest with me and not they're not going to sugarcoat stuff with me either <laughs> like they just will tell me the truth about how they think so- about something or or just be there to listen to me and be the friends that I need in certain situations those are the best friends to have because there's no 
There's no biased opinion. There's no, yeah. they're not going to look at me. They're not going to answer your question on the entertainment type side of things. No, they're just remembering me as like, you know, the ballet major for the University of Calgary that bartended on the weekends. <laughs> right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, right, this right. Me, you know? <laughs> right, like, yeah, like, like I have my friends where it's just like, I'm talking to my friends and like, I have one of my friends where I just go back to my old wrestling fan days is like the, we used to share VHS tapes together and we just watched yeah. wrestling all day. Old Undertaker, like 1997 tapes. And we just, he's nowhere in the wrestling business, but I ended up being around it. But he, every time I talk to him about stuff, he just, he just talks to, he's like, he knows Antoine. He knows Antoine, the big headed mm. little kid that thought he was Kurt Angle when he was a kid. And <laughs> my head's still big as hell, by the way. And he's still, <laughs> you know, he still, um he knows me for me. So that's a, that's a great thing to be able to have those people in your life. Yeah. And you it's know? so, it's so important. And sometimes, you know, when we're so into our work world and we're just like concentrating so hard, you kind of get a disconnect from these people. But I know that those girls I can call or text at any time of the day or whatever, or not talk to them for months. And it doesn't matter. Like, it's just like the same as it always has been kind of thing. Absolutely. Let's switch it up really quick to this question. It's now 2021, about to be 2022. How many years, count and count, give me a number. How many years before we're actually living like the Jetsons with the cars flying over <laughs> in space? I mean, I've seen some crazy robot videos on like Instagram. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, at this point, I don't even know. But if you think about 10 years ago to 20 years ago about how like phones, internet, all that stuff was, I'm totally dating myself. Uh, but then the amount of growth that we've seen in it, you know, electronics and science and aliens and all this stuff, like, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think we're that far off. I mean, people are going to space as a, like a vacation now or something right like or launching themselves up just to come down <laughs> like i'm like i mean five years ago if someone said that i'd be like what why <laughs> I, i'm just waiting i'm just waiting to be sitting on a in space and just riding in, the, in like the jetsons cars like, like your your music like, video like, a swerve yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. there you go so she see see i still got a lot to learn she marketed that better than i did and i'm sitting right there next to the dude like that, that's yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I need to step my game up. That was sharp, my friend. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Yo. But yeah, I don't think we're that far off from it. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be accessible to everybody, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, human development and learning about the world and learning about you know robots and all this kind of stuff. And if we're going to live like the Jets, it's kind of fun. So absolutely, you know. We will see. You, you, you know, you have a very nice ensemble there of, your, of your, the way you address. You dress very nice. You look very, very amazing. As, as yes, very usual. like New Jersey housewife realness happening right now. Okay, so tell me about your your love for fashion. What, what was your, what was your passion for fashion, as they say? What was, what got you um, into that? So I've always been a very eccentrically dressing person. <laughs> There's literally <laughs> photos. I would get picked on in elementary school and this, you can ask my mom. I would get picked on in elementary school because I would buy and pick out clothes that were just like very fashion forward outside of what the normal 10 year old was wearing. You know, like if I, I had this purple rain jacket, it was from the gap, <laughs> <laughs> but it was the purple. Gap. Yeah. The gap. The, gap. Like the gap came to Victoria, British Columbia. It was very exciting. That was uh, it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. So it was like That's this it. purple rain jacket. And I just was obsessed with it because it was like really shiny lavender kind of color. And like kids made fun of me for wearing it to school. And I had like neon tights and silver sh platform shoes and I thought I was a spice girl and like you know all this kind of stuff ginger spice was always my favorite because she was the one that dressed the more you know crazy direction so I've just kind of always expressed myself through my clothes and I and I think that the costuming side of it me having grown up as a ballerina and in and, and, and musical theater and all these kinds of things my dance teacher when I was little was actually, I think she had like a degree in um, costume design. So mm -hmm. the costumes my poor mother had to make for us <laughs> were crazy. And so I've always known and in my head like that like showmanship and all this kind of 
stuff that I love. It's like, I just love dressing for the occasion. I love creating a statement. I, if everybody's looking at me, cool. Even if it's, the, if they think it's weird, I don't care. Like, I feel like I'm a very Lady Gaga inspired person. Uh, yeah, that's a good comparison. Yeah. That's a dope and comparison. I just, I just really enjoy colors and patterns and different costumes from different countries and cultures and different music artists. And I go to concerts literally to see where I went to the Gwen Stefani concert, for example, in Vegas, she just finished her uh, residency there. And I was just taking pictures. Like I'm a huge Gwen Stefani fan. And I was took so many pictures of every outfit that she wore because I get inspired for my character stuff from all these wonderful artists. So it's I just always it. been a thing. I don't know. Like I'll watch, you know, the Met Gala and be taking pictures of everything and and sending them off to like my seamstresses. Bless their souls. Because <laughs> they have to <laughs> deal with me. And like I have color palettes that I find and I send like I'm like, I want to look like a creamsicle ice cream, or I want it to be like I'm a glass of cabernet. Like I just I I love talking about clothes, obviously, and I love just creating visual moments for every person. I feel like professional wrestling and entertainment, musical artists, everybody are creating visual moments. When you go to a concert, you are in a visual experience. And I feel like that's how people should look at wrestling, too. Absolutely. You know, it's funny because you said Gwen Stefani, and that's who when I see when I see pictures and I see the way that you you dress. That's who I see. Cause that's one of my favorite artists. So I see that's why <laughs> that's why I, I thought the inspiration came from. Like for me, yeah, I'm her, very. Yeah. she's freaking a legend. Like you just, Absolutely. I look at like everything from when she first started in No Doubt, Orange County, California, to like you know to now. Everything is just like I just wish that I could just like be her best friend and wear all her clothes. But <laughs> <laughs> not Yo, that that's creepy or anything. But no. Like, <laughs> No, 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 not at all. Yeah. Not at all. I feel, you know, there's certain people that I revere and that, you know, in, in, in the world of entertainment that like, I would love to just, I would love to just talk to Snoop Dogg about anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, just to pick his brain. I don't need any, yeah. I don't need anything else just to just have a conversation with him because he's, yeah. he's, he's been relevant for, since I was a baby. You know what yeah. I mean? So like, how did and you create creative- these creative pro the creative process of everybody is so different. And so I always like, like you're saying, like picking someone's brain, like if I could sit with Gaga over a glass of champagne and some brunch and figure out how she decided to dress in a meat dress, like I'd right. love to know why. Like, right. I just think that that's fun. And that's like learning from, from icons and, and gaining inspiration. And like, you know, if someone says that my costumes inspire them, like this is this trickle down effect and I just love it. It creates magic and creating these, experiences for the fans and I also just it's like a game for me to to think okay I have this idea oh I really like this outfit in this movie or this idea or what if I combine it with this and it's a hybrid of these two things and like I think about this stuff constantly to the point that sometimes John's just like where did he come up with this? And I'm like, I'm like listen I don't know just one day it came to me I have files in my phone that are like Taya style inspos, Frankie style inspos, this, 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 like just notes upon notes of stuff. But I, that's what I love to do. So. Okay. So we're going to have some fun here with this question here. This leads me to this question. Why I ask you this? We're going to do something called, called, called build a song. Okay. So you, you get hit up, you know, Taya Valkyrie, look, you have an unlimited budget. Woo. (laughs) <laughs> and you know it's not you know it's not just a regular song this is a studio experience the record labels like listen what we're going to do is we're going to start from the very beginning we're going to let you pick we're going to let you pick the singer of this song now you got three choices okay lady gaga gwen stefani okay. mariah carey who are you choosing for your theme song I think I would pick Gaga. Ah, okay. I think I would pick Gaga because I feel like her, especially during her like early pop phase or even the recent stuff where she was like with Ariana Grande and they were aliens on a planet. That whole dance, by the way, I learned during quarantine by myself. 
<laughs> I think it's the rain on me music video. Yeah. yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Okay. No, so like I yeah, I think I would pick Gaga because I think that she would execute like a little bit of a crazier visual. I like a just like a little bit crazier. And I think that, you know, let that I mean, I love Mariah Carey, a little heartbreaker, you know, all I want for Christmas is you. Like <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah, around, around Christmas time, she's available. Right. Yeah, yeah. She just woke up after Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. That's where she makes her money. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that I would pick uh Lady Gaga but then if we wanted to do you know the country version I would go maybe with a Gwen Stefani because of Blake Shelton <laughs> got you okay <laughs> now let me let me add to this now okay the label's like okay no problem Ty we'll take care of that we'll get Lady Gaga to sing now mm-hmm. you have to pick a famous rapper to do a rap verse on the song you get three choices oh okay you get three choices here. I'm gonna pick three random people, and I, you're gonna have to choose between one of them. Okay. Pitbull, Flo Rida, or Big Pun. Wow. You didn't even didn't give me like a Megan Thee Stallion in there. Come on. Uh, uh, okay. You know what? You know what? I'll add, you know what? I will I will do this differently. Okay. I will I will I will I will scratch that. I will pick all women. Okay. Let's do it that way. This is a okay. tire song. This is a tire song. All girl the, power. All girl always. power. All women. <laughs> pardon, pardon me, everybody. Normally <laughs> I'm sharper than this. You know what I mean? You know, I got from the gym. I did shoulder, excuse me. Um, I would have picked Pitbull though, because he kind of just like he's the hype guy and he would, you know, hype her up and She's like, she's like, yeah, we'll just get past this part. Yeah, we'll just get past yeah. it. Um, uh, let's see. Magda Stallion, Cardi B. Magda mm-hmm. Stallion, Cardi B. Let me do a little something, a little, let me add a little abstract out there. Missy Elliott. Ooh. Gotcha. Got. <laughs> Got. Got her. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, one person. I can't have them all three. <laughs> can't we wear like you know, cool outfits and dance around? And if you want them to come, out, if you want them to come out there, everybody just humming and snapping. That's the whole budget right there. <laughs> you said I had no budget. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. You have no budget. You have no budget. This is all about. Yeah. This is all fun. Who, well, who, then who, I want who? all three. <laughs> okay, okay. It, just like pro wrestling, we're gonna overbook this music video. <laughs> Absolutely. She's like, she's like, okay, you can do the background of this part. You can do the background of this part. You can sing on this part. You know what? Maybe they yeah. can form a little group for this song. So you have yeah. Lady Gaga. Well, this will be like Lady Marmalade type song. This is gonna be. I all was just on. thinking that. I was yeah. like, is this like almost like a version yeah. of that? Which yeah. I'm so all, I'm totally okay with. That's Absolutely great. <laughs> okay. So you know what? You're gonna have the highest budget theme song of all time. Extravaganza. Yeah. Extravaganza, right? So you have Lady Gaga, you have Meg Cardi, and Missy Elliott on the song. The legend right? who is Missy Elliott. <laughs> yeah. Now, Ooh. here's the last question. Okay. Who is the male counterpart in the video, music video, that is not your husband? Oh! <laughs> You're going to be in so much trouble. Uh, <laughs> but, like, what is the angle with the guy? Like, what is it? Are we best friends? Like, I need some details. Well, this, this, this is your video. You get to choose... This could be HBO late night, or it could be walk at the carnival, like walk at the carnival. It is, it's your, it's your choice. This is your video. All right, your I'm going to say this, and I know that John's going to get so upset. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put Michael B. Jordan in my music video. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> Yo, women love that dude, man. He's hot. Women love Michael B. Jordan, yo. I swear. Yeah. Shout out to him, man. He got the go. He got it. Some guys <laughs> oh just got it, God. man. They ain't even got to try. They got it, man. 
Yeah, and it's like he just seems like he's like a nice guy too. I'm just like, oh, you know. The kill Margaret role did it for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got some aggression to him. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. John, I love you. <laughs> Absolutely. I was like, you know what? I was like, she's gonna pick John. Let me let me add a caveat to that question. Because you know, oh my god. You know, that's that's funny because it's just it's just theater. It's just theater. It's for fun, guys. It's, for it's fun. an imaginary world where I can afford Lady Gaga, Missy Elliott, Cardi B, and Cardi B, Meg the Stallion, and Michael and B. Jordan Michael B. Jordan in the video. <laughs> she's she's got it. This is this is. 25 trillion views. She don't got to wrestle ever again if she don't want to after this. No. This is over. It's After this song comes out, it's a wrap. That's number one on Billboard. She's she's super rich. She's gone. She's out of here. Yeah, I'm out of here. Bye. You're out of <laughs> here. Like, you come back to the rest of wrestling. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> You're gone. I'm um, winning Grammys. <laughs> I'm winning Grammys. Right? You have to watch it. Like, who's that? Yes, yeah, she's <laughs> She was a professional wrestler. Now she's 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 she's, she's gone. She's now. a megastar. She's a megastar <laughs> now. Like she's with Gwen Stefani and Lady Gaga. Superstar? Gala. No, megastar. Me- megastar. Megastar. Yeah. Um, you know what's funny, right? Is we get into these all all walks of life, and we all have different hobbies and many things that we love to do, and and different passions. We talked about your fashion, and you know, you also have your own clothing line as well. Now. Let's talk about this clothing line. I'm slacking. I need to buy some merch. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna. Lie. Be like, I'm not gonna be like, yeah, I got every shirt. And then you be like, go show me one. I'm like, oh, it's not here. But I, I, honestly, I have to. I have to buy some of the merch. I have to support your brand. I definitely Thank will do you. that. Um, that um, is noted to me. I will definitely do that. Tell me a little bit about your brand, your clothing line, and and how how's that going? So, as some may know or may not know, I started Loka by Ty Valkyrie in the spring of like, we were two months into quarantine uh, of 2020. I started out of my, literally out of my house. I was hand dyeing every single piece of clothing. I was packaging it everything. So I, I did that for like all of last year, or, uh, all of 2020. Um, and then was 21, 21 started. Obviously when I got signed to WWE, I kind of like shifted the direction because I needed help because I couldn't just do everything myself. And I am excited to kind of refocus on 2022 and just kind of elevate the brand bring in some different stuff it's all like streetwear uh loungewear comfy stuff um but yeah I just really want to focus back on that I had so much fun like actually making everything that I feel like I really need to go back into that because it was very like soothing to me and it's relaxing and it's it's fun and I have my little um, we're in my office right now uh and like I was a fashion student at the time too so I'm gonna go back and finish my uh fashion degree that I started now that I have more time because I think that you can never be too educated on something and you know I want to be really good at this I want to be really good at anything that I commit to and you know these clothes have my name on them and I really think it's time to just step it up you know I've always been a hustler I always find ways to you know make ends meet surpass what anyone expects and I'm just going to continue to do that in 2022 Mm. so you can check it out at tyvalkyrie.com uh we have some styles up still in time for christmas and then just be ready that uh get on that mailing list and uh, in the new year we'll have some new designs for everybody well you know what i'm definitely getting on it because i said i would and that's this is family right here and (laughs) and i uh was slacking on my pimp and it was not you know what i mean not supporting that like i should be so next music video that you have seen with me on there I will definitely be wearing some of the merchandise. Yes, that is my word. Perfect. That is Speaking my Speaking of music videos. Well, um, so uh, <laughs> so there is a um there's a there's a uh, how can I say this? John Connor and myself. We uh <laughs> if you guys are not familiar with my big bro John Connor, formerly of Aftermath. Dr. Dre, things of that nature, and myself, formerly of Rough Riders, DMX, things of that nature, back in my old days when I was a young lad. I was, um, you know, we, 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 you know, we decided to come together and we decided to work on this tape called War, which is called Wrestling, Ambition, and Respect. And we have a song that we did. Shout out to Don C, who made the, the beat. And um, I'm North Carolina. And we have a song called um more than a valkyrie that we wrote i i i had this idea i said we need a song for a couple but being as privy as to i am in this game i wanted to make sure those people that i liked 
So, <laughs> so, so I said, who's together and who's likely to stay together? <laughs> so, I, so then I went, I said, I said, I said, Swerve, I think the only people I can think of that is like been rocking together a long time and I don't see nothing happening. God, you know, it, it's more, it's more said the time. Plus I know them and that they are cool. And I said, bro, let's do it. So we did the song and I said, Swerve, send it over to, send it over to them. See what they think. And um, they just, you like, send it to me. And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> it's did, so good kept the language clean we kept it as like a like a no, like a like a, like a love good. story like a love story of two people that rely on like like, like need each other want each other and rely yeah. on each other like partners, a story. And partners partners in crime i think you partners call in crime them. and you know, bonnie um, and clyde in there or something too <laughs> absolutely you know mm-hmm. and more of like a story of two people when two great energies connect what can happen and I wanted to keep that story of two equal player fields of two, a wonderful woman and a wonderful man come together. And John followed the lead and on the record. And um, I cannot wait until we shoot the video for that one. Yeah. That one, that one uh, we already talked to John. We will come out to you in LA and we will figure it out. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I just love the song so much. And I'm like, it's, I also just like, I just want people to hear it. So I'm like, <laughs> You gotta get it done. Gotta get, you gotta it, get done. it done. So it, I'll talk, it's I'll talk really to, good. Talk to John. I was like, well, I said, John, I said, we gotta, I said, we need a new atmosphere. We don't need to do this the same way to where it's like, it's in Orlando over by such and such. Nah, we need to go out there. We need to get You mean the, we're not gonna shoot it in Baldwin Park? <laughs> yeah, right, right. And, you know, insert, insert, uh, insert white backdrop here where everybody does their photos. Insert. It's now nah, we're going to go get some of the L.A. air, the California air. Yes. And we're going to come out there and uh, we're going to play some for early 2022. And then um, I know a few directors out there that are really good with videos, too. We can we're going to invest. Our, we're going to invest in that and make that a movie. Sweet. I think I think all four of us should get together and like make this kind of like a like, you know, I know John's in the movies and stuff. Whatever we could do to make this like a story. Let's oh, absolutely, it. absolutely, let's, and let's, let's all like put a our cinematic, minds cinematic something. You know, I just think that that's so fun, and uh, you know, we just want to be just being as creative as possible going into this new year, and I think that that's a, a great way to to get it going. No, I think a movie that is co-directed by four different wonderful minds and how we move, and I think that'd be dope. I think it'll be different from from anything people will say. I, like I just I just know what our four minds. It just would be such a different type video that surrounds the song and it's so much, like more of a story based song instead of just yeah standing in front of your car like yo mm. <laughs> standing in front of the, you know you know you know the standards. driving in my driving down Rodeo Drive driving down Beverly Hills driving down the car or yeah. standing standing in front of the uh. Send the fun the song to somebody in the background. It's like pop, 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 pop. the Holly, <laughs> the Hollywood sign, like Whoa. yeah, yep, yep. The, the, the regular, <laughs> the regular gangster videos where it's like seventeen guys. One guy has no shirt on. He's got the you know he, he's just standing back there all tough. I mean, and, John, John is probably not gonna have a shirt on. <laughs> well, at least you know. Well, well, well the way he's, he's he's in shape, he doesn't need to. So he's he's okay. <laughs> he can get by. You know, he can get he can get by. We could definitely make that work. You know what I mean? We could definitely make that make that work. Cause he 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 wrestles without a shirt on for a living. So he's yep. he's he's good to go. And I'm sure you're not complaining. So no, I mean, be, no, that's fine. It's fine with me. Absolutely. So you know, you know, you know how it goes. So um yeah, speaking of music videos, we definitely that album will be out in April. That album will be out, the song will be out in April. Um I'm gonna talk to John, see if we can get out there February, March sometime, get the video done. Absolutely. And uh, put that out for uh, with the release of the project, and we're gonna work. We're gonna work that out. We're gonna get that done. You got my word on that one because that I gotta see. I gotta see that come to life. That song. Is yes, worth it. I think it'll be just something so fun, and I'm just excited. And the song is really, really good. So I want to make sure that the video is on that level. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for one taking the time to listen to it because you know, uh, and, and and getting your feedback because sometimes you do things that people just like. Oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? Or don't even acknowledge it. You know what I mean? And the fact that you took the time to acknowledge it, to listen, to listen to what we were saying and to know what we're saying. Yeah, and, and I even I sent it to my mom. <laughs> and she loved it. She's like, oh my gosh, who wrote this? <laughs> oh, this is my homie. This is 
the swerve homie. He did good. The swerve homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well, my mom knows swerve, but she calls him kill shot from Lucha Underground. <laughs> so I'm like, I was okay. If I say if I say swerve, she's like, who? I'm like Shane, and she's like, who? I'm like kill shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, these kill shots people. These kill shot yeah. people. They did. They, they're, they, 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 they're good. Um, yeah. so, you know, thank you, thank you again for all the support with that, and and it means it means a lot to me. You know, it means a lot to know that I sat down in this chair. Where you're working, we're looking at me right now, and I wrote this song right here. And it's funny. It's funny. I sat here, I was just like, huh. I listen to the music. I'm like, I got something. And I start typing. Yeah, I, I date myself. I'm still typing my music out. Everybody, you know, I still type my music. <laughs> my handwriting's terrible. So I said, I was like, yeah, okay. I was like, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to the studio and do this. So I recorded it and I sat with it. I listened to it about 20 times. Like it feels good. It felt as good as yeah. when I wrote it. You know what I mean? I sat with it. Good. And, um, you know, uh, Morrison and Valkyrie coming soon, guys. So, you know, coming soon. Coming very, very MTV. soon. <laughs> Actually, that is a. I got an email. I'm going to talk to you. Yeah. Talk to you. We, talk we, to can, you. we can make some things happen. Uh, yeah. I'm going to talk to you because, uh, yeah, I got a, um, got a special idea that, that that could happen. So, um, in other news and other great things, you have, you know, you've always been transcended in what you've done you've always moved in a different way with your brand and in the way that you move because there's many people that are in our line of work that don't they're missing like the business part of things and a lot of times they might be very very athletic or they might be very good musicians but a lot of times the brand doesn't match what everybody what their talents are your brand Mm -hmm. matches everything that your talents are and you and you and you have a special way of of formatting that. And also, I see John with the way that he does his marketing and the way that he does his thing with his movies and the way that, and his um you know his, his comedy and everything that he does. You guys are very very multi talented skilled people. Oh, thank you. And, and what you guys do? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. You know, when you were younger, you also said you know when you were born you uh you uh you shot at the gap when you was younger, and you always had this <laughs> this you know this um. This eccentric type mind. Tell me a little bit about your multi talents. How'd you how'd you become so multi talented? Uh, I don't know. I just think I've always been a creative kid. Like my parents put me in all the dance classes and the musical theater, and I was doing choreography competitions when I was nine and winning. And my I don't know. I've just always kind of been a creative person. I just hey, think that I, hey, I take. She said, and winning, and <laughs> winning, and winning. She said, not just competing. She won too, y'all. Winning. She made sure she said that. Several times. Several times. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) She's a humble queen, I swear. Uh, But um, I just always have been creative and and I like making things and creating, like I said, moments for people and and telling stories. That's what this is all about. Music is telling a story. Wrestling is telling a story. I feel like dance is telling a story. Everything is, uh, you know, and I've just kind of evolved through the years to who I am now. I do think that John and I have two very different ways of our, our creative minds think very differently. Oh. Whereas I'm can be, I am more can make decisions a little bit faster as he'll, he'll like really like be, you know, a hundred pages of notes. Right. And I'm just like, no, it's gotta be this, 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 this. And then I like make changes. Like we think about our, just the way we are creative are two, two very different different ways. So it makes for interesting like collaborations and stuff like that. And, you know, it's good because we have a little bit of both and, you know, we can help each other out when, you know, if something these does need to be more detailed, I'm going to go to John and be like, so like, what about this? And like, he'll just make, ask questions and, you know, make me think about things a little bit more in depth. And if something needs like business needs to get done, I'm the one. <laughs> now, this is a great dynamic here. This is a great thing because, I've I've learned how to do both for different reasons. And it's funny because Swerve is I use Swerve, for example, my my, my guy. Uh Swerve is more the detailed. He'll sit down, he'll he'll break down every single thing mm-hmm. of the situation before the idea happens, but he'll go out and do it and we'll get it done immediately. Me, I'm gonna look, I don't do a podcast at six, let's do it, we'll edit it later, whatever you don't like, we'll cut it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm just I just have to do it. And then yeah. be the template and then be like, okay, we'll work from here and improve from how it looks. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've just always been that way. But I'm the complete opposite when it comes to analyzing others. 
mm. and what competition's doing. I sit back like a sniper and I'm just like watching what everybody uh-huh. does. And I'm like very detailed. And I just look at, at the way humans are, 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 are wired and I'll say, he's going to mess up this or she's going to do great at that. Or, but I, I, just off what people's personalities are. You yeah. know what I mean? Because in business, everybody is very, very tough in what we do to sit back and just watch other people move. Mm-hmm. It's very tough. Because in yeah. order to have a scale of what, not saying you're comparing your competition or not competing or comparing what you do to everybody, you're doing your own thing, you're doing it for yourself. But it's mm-hmm. also a part of you that has to see what is culturally relevant, what's happening. Yeah, it's very, it's, I am very aware of like what is going on in, in, out in the world. Right. <laughs> Sometimes like I read too much into, about it. Me uh, too, me too. I'm the yeah, same way. Cause I'm I just, I just want to know, I want to know what, like what, and especially when it comes to fashion, like you have to be ahead of everything. Yep. And sometimes I'll pick things and then all of a sudden like three and everyone thinks it's weird. And then three months later, people are doing it. And I'm like, I told you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. I told you. Uh, absolutely. But it's just, it's, I've just also, I think when I have a vision for something, I know what it is. Like I can see it from shooting, you know, a promo or whatever, the, whatever the, the project is, or even content. Like I'm very, I'm very specific on what I, what I want and I'm detailed in that way, but I, I, I just can, I want to execute it like now. Like I think how you said, like, we got to do this. We're doing this right now. Like, da, 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 da. Okay. And then I go back exactly like you and edit everything together. Uh, Cause I don't need, right. I don't need a shot list or something. And maybe that's wrong. I don't know. I'm sure if I did a movie, I would need a shot list, but you know, you just have to kind of pick your battles. Sometimes things you have tons of time to do. And sometimes you don't, and I don't want to waste time. I'm busy. I have stuff. And like, I just know that what I'm putting out there, I always have to be proud of and always know that that's the best version of it, that it could be. And uh, let it speak for itself. So are you the type of person that you know you do everything off the head and then just kind of see it from there? Or do you write everything? Do you write it down? I write notes in my phone <laughs> right. in the notes section, but they're very, and also I come up with ideas sometimes at all hours. So I have to make sure just, I'm watching a movie and I'm like, Oh, that's cool. And I'll just like, I have like an idea note and it's like this scene from this movie or this, what she was wearing here. Or what about this character? You know, I, for example, I was watching, this is like two months ago, we watched Black Swan for the first time in like forever. Right. Uh, and how she, the girl, like, you know, she loses herself because she's striving for perfection and like how she wants to, you know, be so perfect that she ends up dying, you know? And it's like this kind of spiraling mental, uh, you know, game that she's playing with herself. And I always thought like, when I think about Taya's La Huera Loca, La Huera Loca is kind of this different uh crazier version of Taya so I always was like oh that's an interesting like you know way of thinking about losing yourself and becoming like this crazy person so I don't know stuff like that like I just kind of sometimes it's absolutely completely unplanned you know and I'm just like oh my gosh that totally reminds me of this or like you know and I play those game those kind of like ideas off one another in order for me to have like the first the like the vision itself Got you. That's funny because that's how normally it, it, it works for me too. I sit down, I think about it. I say, okay, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to see. I'd rather have it out and then critique it from when it's out than try to do the opposite and kind of not know. There's, there's pluses and minuses to each side. And, Absolutely. Yeah. But there's no wrong answer. Just how you're wired. You know what I mean? And I've just been wired to like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this and I'm, I'm, I'm going to scale back from there and see what I can do. But I would rather have it out and not have that thing of feel like I'm holding on to something because mm-hmm. the negative with that, the positives with it is that you get it out there and that you don't get to hold on to something and question it too much. You get to just do it. Yeah. And maybe and get it, reactions and, and see what and, people think. Right. And does it work? Does it not right. work? Like because sometimes you can hold on to something so long and nitpick it, nitpick it, nitpick it. And then by the time you put it out and it might not get the feedback or it didn't come out the way you thought it did. You have to go back to the drawing board away another two months sometime. Now, and also, like, even with social media nowadays, things are moving at a speed of, like, a million miles a minute. And so if you hold on to some idea for, like, a week, then someone else could also be brilliant and have the idea. Or, like, it just isn't relevant anymore. And it's not even, if like, everyone's like, okay, but, like, 
you know that was last week think right. about how fast trends change on social like it's insane so if, in order to keep up sometimes we gotta we gotta go absolutely um you know last few things here i want to say and i want to just do this as far as inspiring others really quick you 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 get a chance to go into this mirror of life and you are who you are now and you're sitting back to that you see you wake up one morning and as you as you the way you are now you you get ready for your day and you're sitting down and across from you is 10 year old tired Mm -hmm. and you get to see yourself in your past and you get to talk to yourself and you get limited time you get like five ten minutes with it with yourself you know what do you what do you tell what do you tell young 10 year old tire now that you've lived your life what do you what do you tell her what piece of advice you give her i would say just to keep believing in yourself and i think also just because when i was young i dealt with bullying i was really short and small i know it's weird now <laughs> a tall human being yeah but uh i got picked on a lot and so i had a lot of self-doubt and i had a lot of just like i never thought i was pretty enough or i never thought i was good enough but i kept pushing and pushing because that's just the type of person that i am and i would just tell her to keep pushing and the hate it just needs to run off of you because you're going to become so wonderful at what you love to do, which is create, which is to be an artist that, you know, all of these little things are just going to be fragments of moments in your past and they don't mean anything. And just to keep pushing forward with the one vision in mind and everything will work itself out. The universe always has a plan. It always works itself out. Now, before you leave the room that the younger you disappears is you 30 years from now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared too. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 boy. Oh, boy. I hope I, I hope I, oh, boy. Uh, listen, oh, um, what, what question, what question do you have for, for, for you 30 years from now? That's like really scary to think about. Uh, I would probably just be like, did I make all my dreams come true? Great, great answer. And because that could be so many different things. I have dreams, professional dreams, personal dreams, you know, dreams of traveling and dreams of being successful and dreams of being with my parents. And you know what I mean? Like, but then I would give it like the did I make all my dreams come true? Hey man, hey man. I'd probably be like, damn, bro, you still got it. I see you got a little gray right there, but you know, you're not bad. I'd be like, wow, not, 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 not bad, kid. Taya, you look good. <laughs> you know, you're not, you know, you're not bad, man. You look you look good, man. You still got a little bit of hair on your head. All right, bro. No, not bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's 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 been an honor to have you on this show. And I always try to keep things light with my guests. I always try to, you know, spend my hour of time with someone and just give them their flowers. I believe that we have to start in this game since our social medias don't do it sometimes. Everything's always criticism or yeah. that's like all of it is. Shout out to the people who do tweet positive things about. Yes, but, please. <laughs> for those folks like from entertainer to entertainer it's not always about competition it's not always about you know we all got to support each other i think that the same way you not saying unions are different things but we all got to be unionized and supporting each other too but this absolutely because this, this is, is hard it's this very is hard. hard this is hard yeah. what we're doing and you know like i said you can go to the neighborhood grocery store and become an assistant manager you know exactly what you're doing every day who you're in charge of what your duties and roles are. And I feel we're mercenaries. We live off of what we, we eat what we kill out here. And yeah. we have And it's to, a constant push, 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 we're push. Always all hunting, yeah. We're always hunting in the field for our next meal out here as entertainers. So, mm -hmm. you know, I want to give you your flowers. You are an amazing, an amazing fashion designer, athlete, guest, host, Thank you. wife, amazing person Thank you. anything you ever need from me i'm here you got my number i appreciate it and this was very felt like therapeutic it felt good to talk to you so i feel like i got to ah, a little bit you know Absolutely. whatever that means that's, but <laughs> yeah that's all i try to do you know yeah. i don't you know we, we... a conversation it's just a conversation and, yeah. uh, thank you for having me i really appreciate you being so positive and supportive and uh i just hope all the best for you too moving forward Thank you. Tell everybody where they can they can follow you, you know, hit you up for any 
business or fancy? Yeah, find me. Um, you can buy Loka by Taya Valkyrie at tayavalkyrie.com, as well as you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at the Taya Valkyrie. And for booking and information about me for appearances or wrestling or acting or whatever, you can get me at tayavalkyrie at gmail.com. There it is, y'all. You know, thank you for joining us on this episode of Teasy's Table. I, I love to bring my friends, my homies on the show. Great people, great people in the walks of life of what we do. You guys want to hit me up for any motivational speaking, any music <laughs> things, any, yes. any, anything of that nature, music, things of that nature, montezytv at gmail.com. Anything for the group, me, Swerve, Music Wise, anything group, Swerve City Podcast at gmail.com. Follow me at TZ Jones on everything, Twitter, Instagram, things of that nature. Follow the podcast, Swerve City Podcast. And, you know, you'll see us very, very soon with more work and stuff that we are doing. And also look out for that Morrison and Valkyrie video coming very, very soon with me and John Connor. Yeah, that uh, is uh, in the uh, universe uh. now. <laughs> Gotta make that happen. Make this a mini movie. And, um, you know, thank you again, family. I will be checking in with you very soon. Hope to have you back sometime. Of course. Thank you. <laughs> have a great one. Let go.